The plants of the UK Overseas Territories range from those of lush tropical rainforests of the Caribbean to the sparse flora of lichens and mosses in Antarctica. They're home to cacti and to coconut palms. Because many of the territories are tiny remote islands, evolution has had chance to create new species found nowhere else, like St. Helena's scrubwood or Pitcairn's yellow fatu. But the tiny size of many of these islands means that the flora of the UK overseas territories is at risk, especially from alien species brought here by humans. Ascension Island, in the center of the Atlantic, is relatively young, erupting from the sea only a million years ago. In places, it is still barren, but it has been colonized naturally by ferns, whose tiny spores can blow on the wind across thousands of miles of ocean. But since it was discovered, Ascension has been deliberately flooded with exotic plants. In the 19th century, plants from all over the world were planted on the highest peak of the island. They quickly turned into the world's most cosmopolitan rainforest. It's hard to believe these were barren slopes just a few centuries ago. The purpose behind these introductions was to create a natural sponge to soak up moisture from clouds and condense it to provide the garrison stationed on the island with a water supply. And the results couldn't be more efficient. There's been no rain up on this mountain top today, but under this tree it's literally dripping with water. And as you can see, the roots are full of water. Ascension was a military base, and it needed more than just water. Ships called in here for repairs, so Norfolk Island pines were also planted. A ship with a broken mast is a bit like an aeroplane without an engine. It will drift out on the open ocean for kilometers until being wrecked ashore on some distant coastline. These trees are the only trees for thousands of kilometers, all the way from South America right down to Africa, that could be used as masts. But these new species have pushed out many native ascension species. But others proved more adaptable. These plants here with the dark leaves, this is one of the four original species of ferns that grew on the mountain. So before the experiment began, there were four species and that's all that grew here. They basically grew down on the ash and the rocks on the exposed, barren, hot slopes. And of course, now since the vegetation has come and grown up as these tall trees, their habitat has been completely destroyed and lost. And what's really amazing is that they've actually grown and are growing now as epiphytes and adapted to this new habitat and so found a new niche which to fill. Half a world away, Pitcairn Island in the Pacific Ocean has similar problems. It was colonized by the famous mutineers from the Bounty, and since then, native vegetation has been cut down or forced to compete with aliens, like these enormous banyans. There are 10 unique species of plants on Pitcairn. Some, like the yellow fatu, are now vanishingly rare. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so this is the uh, yellow fowtu, the avetalon. Um, wow. We've only got one left growing in the wild, one which is, left. yeah, which is quite sad actually. Yeah, Yeah. because you know what, see in there? You see the little, little buds in there coming out? It's both a privilege and a sobering experience to so see this precious plant. Within a week or so, I would say. Even on the most remote islands, native plants are losing out to new introductions. The Chagos Archipelago lies in the center of the Indian Ocean, a scattering of tiny islands. 
In the past, some of these islands were turned into coconut plantations, monocultures of coconut palms that replaced the native vegetation. But on some of the most remote islands in the archipelago, patches of the natural vegetation remain. Instead of endless coconut palms, there are forests with a dense understory of ferns. And growing out of them, magnificent native hardwood trees that provide nesting platforms for seabirds. Back in the Atlantic, the island of St. Helena lies only 1,300 kilometers from Ascension Island, but it's a very different place. It's much older, so there's been more time for plants to find and colonize it, and to evolve into new species. When the first explorers landed here, they found a green island with many unique species. But introduced plants, along with grazing animals, means that some of St. Helena's plants are now extinct, or extremely rare, and confined to the most remote places, like these scrubwood trees. Yet others are on the very brink of extinction. This is one of the last two remaining bastard gumwood trees in the world. There's this tree here, and another on the other side of the island several kilometers away, and that's it for the species. The entire effort to save this tree from extinction rests on these two individuals. But here, as on all the islands of the overseas territories, conservationists are working hard to save these unique species. On St. Helena, a specialist nursery has been set up to grow native plants, and conservationists have scoured the island for the last few remaining individuals as sources for seed, and with remarkable success. So uh, this, this one we have over here yep. is the uh, Centralina boxwood. This, this one had disappeared. Um, disappeared off the records for about 100 years. In the nursery, these precious plants are carefully tended and grown on. Eventually, we get to the point where we have a nice strong seedling in the bag here. And this one now is ready to go back and be planted in the wild. And slowly, forests of St. Helena's unique trees and shrubs are regrowing. Although it's too late for many species of plants across the overseas territories, thanks to the work of dedicated conservationists, the future now looks brighter for many others. The Britain's Treasure Islands book explores the unique wildlife, cultures and history of all of the UK overseas territories. Visit britainstreasureislands.com for details. In sincere thanks to Lord Ashcroft for funding the donation of one copy of the Britain's Treasure Islands book to every secondary school across the UK and her overseas territories. Thanks also to all Kickstarter backers and all sponsors and partners for making the 40 mini documentaries possible.